shut up. Yeah. Well, why don't you come back there? Well, I can't get back. I can. I got long arms. Here, here, here. No, I'm hosting the show. I'm too busy to be a reporter right now. Okay, I almost broke the radio. Hey guys, you're listening to W shut up. WSLU Radio 100.1 FM, 1620 AM. This is the Mid Morning Show and I'm your host with the most to boast, Nick Cotter. What's up? Hey everybody, how you doing? And today with us we have the camera. Hi camera. It's going to be watching me and it's going to record this segment and hopefully I'm going to get a promo out. But I'm not recording this on the computer, so that's not going to be a chance. It's going to be a video promo. Vote for me. Buy my CD on YouTube. It's going to be on YouTube. Tune in to YouTube. How have you made me wrong? But anyway, gosh, a lot, of to- a lot to talk about today. Anybody go to that uh, speech with the Mr. Priester guy? Wow. He's really nervous. He had some good points. Okay, people are thirsty, right? People need water. I'm feeling pretty thirsty right now, but I don't want to go get my bag. But... He really didn't like have any sort of solid thing to say, you know, and it's it's like, okay, there are these problems, but how do we fix them, Mr. Priester? I don't know. It's like, okay, um, thanks for the input. I got some extra credit for my English class. Cool. You know what? That makes me think. Fetch me my lab coat. I want to look interesting. Shut up. Said what? thing making me famous. I have to respect you. Yeah, I like that. Try. How do I look? Interesting? Yeah. I'll take so. Thank you. Or 500. But anyway, you know, but, and um, I think he contradicted himself somewhere in there. He was talking about, you know, the problem with these plastic water bottles, they won't break down. And then later, like five minutes later, he's talking about, well, the problem with drinking out of the plastic water bottles is that they erode after a while, and you start ingesting the plastic. I'm like, huh, well, just a few minutes ago, you said that the plastic water bottles, you can't get rid of them. And by that, I'm, I'm willing to guess. I'm just going to venture a guess here that you're trying to say that plastic doesn't break down. And okay, if you look at it like that, plastic does not suffer entropy. That means it never breaks down. It does not go through any sort of ener- energy change at all. It doesn't It doesn't break down. And if that's the case, why don't we make more things out of plastic like buildings? If plastic is such a resilient material, why don't we make like skyscrapers out of plastic or like cars out of plastic? I know we have car parts. We have kitchen utensils. We have like eating utensils. We have the the throwaway like silverware that's made out of plastic. But you notice one thing, it breaks and people throw it away. And just because they throw it away and you never see it again doesn't mean that it breaks down. Okay. Have you ever noticed that, uh, how how can I point this out? You ever, like, this is going to sound weird, but you, have you ever had to, like, replace the fastenings on a sink? I'm going to go ahead and guess no, because you don't look like a plumber. But anyway, I lead a very adventurous life if you follow my, my journey sometimes. Anyway, if you ever have to replace the fasteners on a sink, they're made out of plastic, right? Yeah, they erode. They, they break into these tiny little pieces, and they, they just become flaky. Or have you ever set army men on fire? They melt. Or have you ever, like, ground them up before, you know, as sadistic as it may seem? They go away. So the whole main thing here is that, yes, plastic does suffer entropy. Uh, no matter where you are or who you are, it does. Don't tell me any different. What else do I want to talk about today? Do you know? I'm not speaking English. I, I, I don't seem like I'm speaking English. What? Okay. It seems like I'm speaking Spanish. What does that even mean? What are you talking about? That's like arbitrarily blaming things for speaking different languages. Like this clock here, it's telling me the time in Dutch. I don't trust it. Or the phone. The phone is looking at me in Chinese, however that may feel. Oh, and... Really? That'll do me about as good as drilling another hole in my head. Hey, it would be great. I could put pencils in it. I could pour coffee in it instead of having to drink it. I could... I don't know, put all my, store all my marbles in there. No, I don't need another hole in my head. The whole main thing here is that 
I'm going to go ahead and advise everybody that you don't drill holes in your head because it's very bad. Used to be a remedy to get demons out. Didn't work. Infection, pain, just sheer stupidity of drilling a hole in your own head. head. But hey, when you're so fed up with yourself that you believe that there are demons crawling around in your brain, you get led to do some crazy things, let me tell you. Like, uh, you ever had cabin fever? Of course you haven't, because you haven't stayed home that long. But trust me, take, take it from somebody who's been stranded somewhere for a very long time. And I don't mean I, I'm like a survival expert or anything, but I was dumber than home when I was a kid. Better get this plate straight. Dumber than home when I was a kid. You, you get stranded at home, there's really nothing to do. And you eventually start justifying just doing anything, like, I don't know, sticking buttered toast to cats to, to create anti-gravity. You, you know, the whole talk, stick buttered toast to a cat. Okay, cat's always laying feet first, buttered toast when it's butter side down. Stick the two together, the cat will fall and spin continuously. I mean, I'm thinking, like, you could solve energy crises here. If you can harvest that energy, if the cat is just suspended in motion forever, you know, not ever hitting the ground, you could you could have flying cars, you could have... You could replace nuclear power plants, you know, all the people who are afraid of nuclear energy and, you know, hippies would be happy, but, you know, you can't. Well, of course, because genocide is a very bad thing. Take it from this uh, this guy I used to know, Adolf Hitler. He had the completely wrong idea. So I was having lunch with Hitler the other day, and he's like, so I got this idea. I got this idea, okay? Y you see all these people, and then, you know, I'm like, okay, I, I seriously, I can't go through with this, Hitler. I got to go. So I just left. Very weird, though. See, he just all the wrong ideas. So I'm going to go ahead and advise people not to take this, this step in that direction because, you know, Mr. Treaster was even talking about that. You know, somebody brought up a point that uh, population control was uh, an important issue of the whole restrained water thing. And he said, well, you know, that's true and all, but... W would you rather just not try and find a means to get water to all these people? Or would you just rather have them all just die, which is just cruel, you know? A human being is still a human being. You gotta, you gotta have that respect and dignity. As much as I sound like a... Yeah, one of those. I don't have the hair for it, though, or the cool tie-dyed clothing. As much as I sound like one of them fellers, um, yeah, respect people. Like, there was this little kid the other day, or yesterday he was, asking, has anyone really been studying me? Oh, I must be talking fast. Little kid the other day, walking around telling me, like, yeah, this one kid beat me up and took my lunch money. He's like, yeah, I, I try to be nice and everything, but it doesn't seem to pay off. And, you know, they always do say that nice guys finish last, but it's still the thing. You know, you beat up people, you get their lunch money, okay, you get lunch, but over time, they say that nice guys finish last, but it's still the thing. You know, you beat up people, you get their lunch money, okay, you get lunch, but over time, it's it's good for the, the short term, you get the money, you beat the kid up, you feel better, you get lunch, you get your hoagie, you eat it, happy, short term, okay, long term, you get people who hate you, you get nobody who comes over to your parties, you get nobody who wants to know you because you're such a turd. Oh yeah, except for that, why, you know what, I like to pose a question, you can call in and answer this, why is it that... In my experience, it just seems to be that uh, girls like the, the guys that are just mean. Why is that? Maybe I should be mean. But no, then again, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to throw away my old personality that I got going. Because look what it won me. It got me a lab coat and uh, a morning show. I'm going to stick with that. What? The number for the show. Okay. So you can call in at like 352-588-7440. Uh, Toll-free number. Cash prizes in the works, trust me. You ever win a dollar before over the phone? It's just me. I try to shove it in through receivers, but it doesn't go through. But, uh, which brings me to my next point. Oh, wait, I don't have a point. I just sort of talked about whatever. Hmm. Yeah, what was I? Oh, yeah, mean people. Oh, yeah, like all those people who promised to tune into my show. Which, you know, reminds me of a certain song. How I feel when... People say they'll tune into my show and they don't. Reminds me of a song that uh, a Miss Celine Dion once sang to me in a crowded lunchroom. Hang on, I gotta turn this up. And this is what it's like hosting a show by yourself. So come on, you can.